Hi, everyone. So I had a faculty question today about back channeling. What is it? When can I use it? How can it be? How can I find a free tool that lets me do this? Um, so back channeling is any way that you can get students to contribute questions or responses to the presented information as you're talking or as they're watching a video. How do you get them to throw up their questions in a board other than just saying, do you have any questions? So back channeling lets students contribute their answers just using their mobile phone into a collective pool, and then you can pull out the key relevant questions that really tackle what you think are the learning objectives for the day or that seem to be the most frequently asked. And this helps keep learners active and participatory and engaged as they go through presented content, and it helps them feel like their questions are being addressed. So back channeling is a key strategy for when you're using presentation, video, anything like that. So let's take a look at a couple of ways that I've set up a back channel in Mentimeter. I like Mentimeter because it's a free tool, has a fantastic privacy policy and is fully accessible. So if you're using Mentimeter, go ahead and follow along with me. If not, take some of the strategies I'm about to show you and apply them to your own context or to your own tool. If you ever need any help, you know that you can reach out to teaching and learning at conestovac.on.ca and we will be available to help you. So I've made a Mentimeter uh, presentation called Back Channel. And so far, it's just a simple little presentation. If you don't have one already, just go ahead and click New Presentation and follow along with me. But I'm going to go into my Back Channel and I'm going to show all of the slides that I've created. So when I first made this Back Channel presentation, I just had an open-ended slide. So I started by building a slide and in the type content area, I'm, uh, I'm maxed out with my questions, which is perfectly fine, but I just picked the open-ended question type. And an open-ended question type is, is a fantastic starting point if you're just introducing this idea of back-channeling to students. Um, and here's why I like it. When you pick the open-ended question type, this feels really easy for students um, to just say, text in your answers. They just go to menti.com and they use the code that is identified on your slides. Um, and that code changes frequently. You can actually customize the text that appears here at the top. So if you wanna ask a targeted question, you can, or if you wanna just call it a back channel, you can also do that. And you can actually have the speech appear either as speech bubbles or as one by one, which is really nice to help focus in on either the variety of questions or uh, straightforwardly, here is a question that I want us to focus on. Avoid using the flowing grid. It feels distracting to me to have uh, stuff move like that. So either show the questions one by one or as speech bubbles. What you also get here with the, the open-ended question slide is that you can filter the profanities. So if you're just introducing this tool and you're not too sure what students, how students might engage with it, go ahead and just select all. Uh, any profanities that are entered are going to come up with a lot of those special characters. So you'll be able to recognize them and do a little classroom management suggesting that uh, if we can't engage in appropriate ways with the tech, then uh, there won't be an avenue to use it. So gentle reminders are usually sufficient, um, but do make sure you turn on the profanity filter as a general rule. You can also turn on the ability for students to submit more than once, which lets them contribute many questions if they have them, um, or just one or two. It's completely up to them. So I like starting from the point of just an open-ended question types. You can even take this slide and reuse it over and over and over again, even live in class by just exiting the presentation and hitting reset results. Um, so resetting the results is nice and an easy way for you to refresh the questions that are available for student. And you can just hit present and show them the back channel. Now, another way that you could have them back channeling. So if you're like me and you're using Mentimeter, which many of you are, then maybe you've already used an open-ended question type or you've already used a word cloud or you've already used a multiple choice question. Um, and now you're ready to move on to a Q&A a Q &A session. Uh, so there's actually in Mentimeter uh, a Q&A slides where you could put in the ability for students to text in their questions and they can go ahead and do that. What I like about these is that they automatically appear 
uh, one by one. And students can actually vote up or down the questions as they like them. So if many students have the same question, they can see it and they can vote it up. The other thing that you can do here is you can click A to mark questions answered and then they disappear, or Q to move on to the next question. So this really lets you kind of engage with the questions on a one-to-one -one basis. It lets learners share and, and uh, clarify where their misunderstandings are happening by voting them up or down. Um, and the Q&A slides are a freebie. So I know that in Mentimeter, you're limited to only two or three of these um, question types. But I'm all done most of the rest of my question types, and I still have more Q&A slides available to me. In fact, if you look down my list over here along the side, I actually have one, two Q&A slides. Let's add another one and turn it into another Q&A slide. And I can have Q&A slides embedded throughout my presentation. Uh, so you can really effectively use those Q&A slides. Uh, you can even customize them with different questions at the top. So this one at the beginning of my presentation says, ask me anything. But I might change that to say, what is one key learning from last week? And then it effectively invites students to participate in my bridge or my minds on from last week, from last week's material. So the Q&A slides are a really great flexible way for you to have student engagement, participation, questioning throughout your presentation, um, as long as you know how to manage it. And once the culture has been established of what appropriate engagement um, with this questioning tool might look like. So I can actually really build out and customize the way I ask students to back channel in my class. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive look at back channeling in the classroom. There's certainly a lot of other strategies or ways that you might try this out. So if you want to reach out, just email us at teachingandlearning at conestogac.on.ca and we'll be happy to reach out to you and support you in trying this out in your teaching or take what, a tidbit of what you learned today and give it a try and see how it goes. Um, again, teaching and learning at conestogac.on.ca. Just let us know how your teaching goes.